Congratulations on the purchase of your new Tenant Model 1610 Dual Technology Carpet Cleaner. Not only will your machine perform well with its highly efficient carpet cleaning system the day you receive it, but for a long time to come. This operator training video will be presented in eight sections. How dual cleaning technology works, machine setup, controls and instrumentation, pre-operational preparation, operating your machine, draining and cleaning your machine, optional accessory tools, and maintenance requirements. The safety labels that appear on the machine indicate important information you need to be aware of when operating the machine. One of those labels is located on the recovery tank lid and it reads, for safety, read the owner's manual before using machine. It is the operator's responsibility to read and understand the operator's manual. How dual cleaning technology works. Your machine offers two cleaning technologies, restorative extraction and soil transfer extraction, which we call ready space. By using both technologies, you can easily develop a cleaning program to greatly extend the use life of your carpet. With the simple exchange of a vacuum shoe and two rollers or brushes, you can easily switch from one technology to the other. Restorative extraction. You should use restorative extraction periodically to thoroughly clean to the base of the carpet. The amount and type of daily traffic are important factors to determine how often restorative extraction should be performed. This type of cleaning should be planned in advance and performed during closed hours. The allowable drying time is four to eight hours. Note, drying time may vary due to carpet type and climate conditions. When using restorative extraction, hot water and cleaning detergent from the solution tank are sprayed directly onto the carpet. As the machine moves forward, two counter-rotating V-pattern brushes agitate the solution deep into the carpet. As the machine continues to move forward, the vacuum shoe recovers the dirty solution from the carpet. Ready Space You should use Ready Space to clean visible soils on a daily basis or as needed to maintain a high level of carpet cleanliness. Ready space may be used during normal business hours because often the carpet is dry in less than 30 minutes. When using ready space, the ready space agent is pre-sprayed on the carpet with the use of a pump-up sprayer. After allowing the ready space agent to sit on the carpet for about 5 to 10 minutes, your machine is then put to work. With ready space, hot water is sprayed directly onto two counter-rotating nylon fiber rollers instead of the carpet. As the rollers rotate, much of the water is removed from them using two vacuum shoes. This leaves the rollers damp. The damp rollers then agitate the carpet, working both sides of the carpet fiber. The soiled rollers continue to rotate while hot rinse water and the two vacuum shoes easily extract the soil from the rollers. Machine Setup To prepare your machine to use restorative extraction, Follow these three steps. Step 1. Unlatch the idler plates and install the brushes. Note the eye on the end plug of each brush indicates the idler plate end of the brush. Step 2. Remove the solution flush lines from each end of the rear vacuum shoe by pushing up on the tab and pulling out on the line fitting. Next. Using the supplied 6mm hex head tool, install the extractor vacuum shoe on the rear of the scrub head. Step 3. Connect the vacuum hose to the carpet extraction vacuum shoe. To prepare the machine to use ready space, follow these four steps. Step 1. Unlatch both idler plates and install the two ready space rollers. You can install the ready space rollers with either end next to the idler. The rollers will be rotated after each 10 hours of operation. Step 2. Install the rear ready space vacuum shoe on the scrub head and connect the solution flush lines. Step 3. Connect the vacuum tube to the roller vacuum shoe. Step 4. Connect the vacuum hose to the vacuum tube previously attached to the vacuum shoe. Note, 
If the carpets are heavily soiled, before using Ready Space, first use restorative extraction. Then begin your Ready Space program. Controls and instrumentation. The console height is adjustable. To adjust, pull the console height adjustment lever on the right side of the console backward. Then lift or lower the console to a comfortable operating height. When you release the lever, the console will lock at the desired height. The main power key switch is located on the rear of the machine, low on the control panel. Turn the key to the right to turn the machine power on. Turn it to the left to turn off the power. When the main power is turned on, the power indicator light on the control panel will illuminate. The control grips on either side of the console allow you to control the direction and speed of the machine. Turn the grips forward to move forward. Turn the grips rearward to move in reverse. A speed control knob allows you to set the maximum cleaning speed. Turn the knob to the right to adjust the speed faster and to the left to adjust the speed slower. The optimum cleaning speed is approximately at 2 o'clock on the knob. The scrub head lift lower switch controls the scrub head. Press the bottom of the switch to lower the scrub head. and press the top of the switch to raise the scrub head. A brush pressure switch allows you to adjust the scrub brush or roller down pressure. Press the top of the switch to increase the pressure and the bottom of the switch to reduce the pressure. You can monitor the brush or roller pressure with the meter on top of the control panel. The needle should always be in the green. Never operate the machine with the needle in the red or circuit breakers will trip. The machine is equipped with four resettable circuit breakers located above the key switch on the rear of the machine. They are designed to protect the machine from an electrical overload. If a circuit breaker trips during operation, allow the motor to cool and then manually reset it by pushing the breaker button in. If it trips again, contact a qualified service professional. Each vacuum motor is protected by a 30 amp fuse. The fuses are located in the wire harness that is connected to each vacuum motor. Note, if replacing a fuse, never substitute a fuse with a higher amp rating than 30 amps. The hour meter records the number of total hours the brush motors have been powered on. Use the hour meter to record service history, to determine machine usage, and to know when to perform required maintenance procedures. On the lower right rear of your machine is a solution tank sight gauge that indicates how much solution is remaining in the solution tank. This meter indicates the charge remaining in the batteries. When the meter begins to flash, stop cleaning and transport the machine to the recharging area. When two lights begin to flash alternately, the scrub head will automatically raise to the transport position. This will protect the batteries from total discharge. When this happens, you will need to recharge the batteries immediately. Never let the batteries remain in a discharged state for prolonged periods of time. Before operating the machine, there are a few steps to take and checks you will need to perform to confirm the machine is ready for operation. Vacuum the floor and remove any debris. Check the battery charge level indicated by the battery meter. Inspect spray nozzles for proper spray pattern. Make sure the recovery tank shutoff float screen is clean. When using ready space, check the rollers for wear, inspect the roller vacuum shoes for debris, and make sure the solution tank is filled with only water without any cleaning detergent. The machine may be filled from either the rear using the hose fill port or from the front using the bucket fill port. Note, when filling the solution tank with a bucket, make sure it is clean. Do not use the same bucket for emptying and filling the machine. Fill the solution tank to the 75 liter or the 19.8 gallon mark with hot water at a maximum of 60 degrees centigrade 
or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Warning, fire explosion hazard. Never use flammable liquids. If you are using restorative extraction, pour the recommended cleaning detergent into the solution tank following the mixing instructions on the bottle. When using the machine for restorative extraction, use only recommended cleaning detergents in the solution tank. Attention! Machine failure due to improper detergent usage will void the manufacturer's warranty. If you are using ready space, pre-spray the carpet with the ready space pre-treatment cleaning detergent using the pump-up sprayer. Note, do not add extractor cleaning detergents to the solution tank when using ready space. To operate your machine, first turn the key to the on position indicated by the line next to the switch. Transport your machine with the scrub head raised to the area to be cleaned. Press the scrub head switch to lower the scrub head. Adjust the brush pressure meter within the green zone by pressing the brush pressure switch. For best cleaning results, adjust the brush pressure meter so the needle is at the bottom of the green zone for restorative extraction and in the middle of the green zone for ready space. Attention! Do not operate the machine with the brush pressure meter in the red zone or circuit breakers will trip. To begin cleaning, roll the control grips forward and gradually turn the speed control knob to the recommended cleaning speed of 100 feet per minute for ready space and 50 feet per minute for restorative extraction. The normal setting is approximately at 2 o'clock. To operate the machine in reverse, simply rotate the control grips backwards. The machine will continue to clean in reverse during ready space operations. This allows you to back clean over heavily soiled areas into corners and into tight spaces. When reversing during restorative extraction operations, the scrub head will raise and all cleaning stops. Once restorative extraction is continued, you may need to readjust the brush pressure. Here are some basic guidelines while operating the machine. Overlap each cleaning path by 50 millimeters or 2 inches or more. Use a collapsing rectangle pattern when cleaning large rooms. If excessive foam appears in the recovery tank, Pour a recommended foam control solution into the tank. Foam will not activate the shutoff float, so do not allow foam to enter the shutoff float screen or vacuum motor damage will result. When using the machine, go slow on inclines and slippery surfaces. Be careful not to operate the machine on inclines that exceed 3 degrees when cleaning or 11 degrees while transporting. While operating the machine, observe the battery meter discharge level and charge as required. You should also observe the solution tank level hose to monitor the remaining solution. Warning: Fire or explosion hazard. Do not pick up flammable materials or reactive metals. To stop propelling, position the machine on a level surface and gradually release the control grips. With ready space, you will get less than 30 minute dry times during single pass cleaning in a climate control building set to OSHA recommended temperatures. If you would like to accelerate drying with either ready space or restorative extraction, air movers can be placed in the area. Draining and cleaning your machine. Raise the scrub head to the transport position and transport the machine to a draining site. Turn the key to the off position. Drain and rinse out the tanks after every use. Janitor closets with floor sinks are best suited for wastewater disposal. You can also use a five gallon bucket if a floor sink is unavailable. The tank drain hoses are located on the rear of the machine. The recovery tank drain hose is located on the right rear and the solution tank drain hose is located on the left rear. To drain the tanks, remove the drain hose caps and slowly lower the hoses over the drain site. You can lift the hoses to stop the flow if needed. Note, when using a bucket to drain the recovery tank, do not use the same bucket to fill the solution tank. Rinse out the recovery tank and the shutoff float screen with clean water. Reinstall the drain hose caps and secure them after draining. When leaving the machine unattended, park the machine on a level surface and remove the key. Optional accessory tools. 
Optional accessory tools allow you to clean upholstery and carpeted areas that the machine is unable to reach, such as alcoves, stairs, corners, and small rooms. Attention! Before using accessory tools, the extractor vacuum shoe must be installed on the machine. To connect an accessory tool to the machine, park the machine on a level surface and turn the key to the off position. Disconnect the lower vacuum hose from the machine and replace it with the accessory tools vacuum hose. Connect the accessory tools solution hose to the coupler located at the rear of the machine. Then attach the accessory tool to the hoses. To operate accessory tools, turn the key to the on position. Lower the scrub head to activate the vacuum. Place the accessory tool on the area to be cleaned. Squeeze the trigger on the accessory tool and slowly pull the tool backwards while applying downward pressure. Release the trigger six inches from the end of the stroke. Continue with a two to four inch overlap. Note, when cleaning upholstery, always follow the cleaning instructions sewn into the furniture by the manufacturer. After cleaning, relieve the water pressure from the accessory tool by turning off the key and squeezing the trigger for five seconds and then disconnect the solution hose. Maintenance requirements. Charging the batteries. When the battery meter begins to flash, stop scrubbing and recharge the batteries. Attention! To prolong the life of the batteries and to provide optimum machine performance, only recharge the batteries after a total of 30 minutes of use or more. Transport the machine to a well-ventilated area for charging. Park the machine on a level surface and turn the key off. Before charging the batteries, check the electrolyte level in each battery cell. The electrolyte level, A, should slightly cover the battery plates, B. Add distilled water as needed. Do not overfill. The fluid will expand while charging and may overflow. Install the cell caps before charging. Connect the charger's AC power supply cord to a properly grounded receptacle. Connect the charger's DC cord to the machine's battery receptacle located under the recovery tank. Warning! Fire or explosion hazard. Batteries emit hydrogen gas. Keep sparks and open flame away. Keep battery compartment open when charging. The charger will automatically begin charging and shut off when fully charged. Note. The machine will not operate once the battery charger is connected. Attention! Do not disconnect the charger's DC cord from the machine's receptacle when the charger is operating. Arcing may result. If the charger must be interrupted during charging, disconnect the AC power supply cord first. After charging, check the electrolyte level A again. The level should be approximately 1 centimeter, or 5 sixteenths inch, from the bottom of the fill port B. Add distilled water if needed, but do not overfill. To keep your machine in good working condition, simply follow these daily, weekly, and monthly maintenance procedures. Daily maintenance. Drain and rinse out the recovery tank. Rinse off the float shutoff screen located in the recovery tank. Drain and rinse out the solution tank. After the ready space was used, remove the splash guard cover and inspect the rollers for wear. If the gap between the two rollers is greater than 4 millimeters, or 532 inch, replace the rollers. Always replace rollers as a set. Clean the machine housing with an all-purpose cleaner and damp cloth. Note, when servicing the machine, do not power spray or hose off the machine. An electrical malfunction may occur. Recharge the batteries. Weekly maintenance. Rotate the ready space rollers end for end after every 10 hours of use. The roller life is rated for at least 100 hours of use under normal cleaning conditions and when rotated every 10 hours. If the gap between the two rollers is greater than 4 millimeters or 532 inch, replace the rollers. Remove any debris buildup from the underside of the scrub head. Remove the front and rear roller vacuum shoe covers and remove any debris. Remove any entangled carpet fibers and debris from the brushes. Replace the brushes if worn. 
To determine when to replace worn brushes, observe the brush pressure meter. If unable to adjust the pressure into the green zone, this is a good indication that the brushes should be replaced. Remove any debris lodged in the carpet extraction vacuum shoe. Inspect the spray tips for proper spray pattern. If spray pattern is obstructed, clean the spray tips with water or replace them. Never use wire to clean the spray tips because it will damage them. Monthly maintenance. Make sure the solution tank is empty and then remove the solution tank filter from underneath the machine and rinse out the screen. Note, during ready space operation, the flush line will spray every two and a half minutes for a few seconds to flush debris from the debris troughs. Maintain the batteries according to the battery maintenance guidelines. Lubricate the caster grease fittings with water resistant grease. Check the machine for water leaks and loose nuts and bolts. Performing the daily operational checks, making needed adjustments and following the proper operating procedures for your Tenant Model 1610 Dual Technology Carpet Cleaner will ensure that it will perform in top condition throughout its useful lifetime. You will find it cleans better, has fewer maintenance issues, and effectively enhances the environment. We're sure you'll be happy with your Model 1610 Dual Technology Carpet Cleaner for a long time.